Remember this evening we're going to be going through a bit of Faraday's Law. It is the grade 11 syllabus, it's a bit of revision. Just a little bit of background, Michael Faraday, who was he? He was an English physicist, he was a mathematician. He was busy doing some practicals and what he needed is he needed a constant electricity source. So he did practicals on electricity. So this evening we're going to go on, on how Michael Faraday did his practicals and how he made electricity. Okay, I'm sure all of you have heard the, the term EMF, which stands for electromotive force. And this is basically Michael Faraday's law. What he realized that is when he takes a magnet and he puts it into a coil and he moves the, the magnet in and out of the coil, okay, he noticed that you get an electric current produced. So what, what we have is that if I draw a very simple, oh, not like that, if I draw a very simple coil, like so, and then I take a bar magnet, a bar magnet, um, a north pole and a south pole. I'm going to notice, and then I move it in and out of the coil. I'm going to notice that there's a electric field produced. So if I take that and I now connect it to a galvanometer or an ammeter, I'm going to notice that there's an electric field produced. The interesting thing about this law is this, this is still the same law that we use today to produce electricity. Telcom, well, Telcom, ESCOM, are, they do the Michael Faraday's law every single day. Right now, while you're watching TV, while you, the lights are on, what they do is they take massive, massive magnets. They take electromagnets and they spin them very quickly. They spin them inside of a coil and then they spin it at 3,000 RPM or 50 hertz, okay, 50 times a second and they produce the electricity that you have in your homes today. Okay, so this is still the law that we use today, even though it was over 200 years Michael Faraday came up with this law. So what I have here is just a, a, mag a coil just to show you that if we take a magnet and we put the magnet inside the coil, or what we call a solenoid, if we put a magnet inside the solenoid and then take it in and put it back out, uh, sorry, take it out and put it back in, we are going to produce an electric current. Now you have to actually know why we produce that electric current. Okay, the reason for that is that when we take a magnet and we put it into a coil, what happens when we move a magnet is we are producing an electric field. Okay, John spoke about that about two weeks ago. Phil started going over it on, on Tuesday. But what actually happens is we produce an electric field. So our magnet moving into our coil has got an electric field around it. And then when we move it, we're actually going to produce an electric, or we're going to make an induced current in the coil or in the solenoid. There's a few formulas that you're going to have to remember for your exams. They are phi is equal to BA. Okay, what does phi stand for? Phi stands for, for magnetic field. Okay, stands for magnetic field. I'm joking. Why does that stand for magnetic field? Phi stands for magnetic flux, sorry. Magnetic flux. Magnetic flux. And what is magnetic flux? Magnetic flux is the amount of, the, the actual, like the strength of the magnets. So a magnetic flux is measured in Weber, and the symbol for Weber is WB. is WB, is capital W, small v. So that's what phi stands for. My B stands for magnetic field strain. Magnetic field. <coughs> and my magnetic field is measured in Tesla. And the unit for Tesla, the SI unit, is capital T. 
Then there's one more thing in the formula. That's A. There's my A over there. That stands for area of the coil. And that area is going to be measured in meters squared. So just remember to convert your area to meters squared. Okay, it's very important to get the correct SI units. So <coughs> if we put that formula into practice, if I take a magnetic field and I have the magnetic field going into the page, represented by crosses, and now I put a coil inside or a loop inside that magnetic field, I can now work out <coughs> the magnetic flux in that coil. Another formula that you're going to have to know is the formula for EMF. Okay, electromotive force is minus number of coils, delta phi, okay, over delta T. A quick reminder, what does that delta phi actually mean? It means the final minus initial. So delta, this triangle stands for delta. It means your final magnetic flux minus your initial magnetic flux. And the same for delta T stands for final time minus initial time. So that would be the, the amount of time that we take to, to get the coil out of the magnetic field. And then N stands for number of coils. So number of coils. That's what N stands for. Now those are the two formulas you would have used in grade 11. Okay, we are going to be going through a question with that later. Okay, but we just have to know what those formulas are and what everything stands for. This will be coming up in your physics paper in two weeks time and it's from your grade 11 syllabus so just make sure you go through this as well. Don't leave it out because it's in the grade 11, 11 syllabus. It's very important to include it. Okay, now that's the very basics of electromotive force or Faraday's law. Okay, that's a very basic. That's just to help you remember from last year. Please don't take that as you're studying. Okay, that's just to get your brain thinking on what, what you should be doing. Yeah, 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 yeah.